here we go. Let's go ahead and start with this formula. We've got 7x minus 4y is equal to negative 28. And what they want us to do is to plot the intercepts to the graph of the equation. So how many intercepts is the line going to have? It's going to have two. It's going to be a y-intercept and an x-intercept. y-intercept is at 0 comma something. The x-intercept is going to be at something comma 0. So if you want to start by writing that, that'd be fine. That's just a quick prop for you. Let's find the y-intercept first. To find a y-intercept, I need to make x zero. zero. So if this is zero, if this is gone, then all I'm doing is dividing both sides by negative four. What would that be? Seven. seven. So there it is. If I'm trying to find the x-intercept, and that means that y is zero, so this is gone, and all I'm doing is dividing both sides by seven, and the x value would be negative four. So there you go. That was a coincidence that they matched the, the coefficients. That's not always going to happen, so don't feel like it will. Questions on that problem? So let's go ahead and graph those real quick. Uh, let's see, what, what do I want to use? This one? So 0, 7, 0, 7. And I'm just making sure right up here, see that up there in the corner? That I'm on the right point, which was 0, 7. And the other one should be negative 4, 0, which is right there. Save. Check answer. Math. Questions on that? All right, besides seven, what else? Ten. All right. Let's go ahead and close this. Clear the ink. Putting your phones away and closing your laptops. Here we have. Just write the equation of a line through the given point. Use the slope intercept form. So, the point we have here. Anything you say gets recorded, guys. So, the coordinate they gave us is negative 6, comma 3. So the point that, the, the new line that we make has to cross that point, and it's got to be perpendicular to y equals uh, negative 4 over 5. Devin, what two things do I need to make a, an equation of a line in slope-intercept form? Slope. Slope, which we call m. Y. Right. Y-intercept, which we call the b, right? So looking at this perpendicular line, what should my new slope be? 5 over 4. Positive 5 over 4. Opposite and reciprocal. So positive 5 over 4. I'll show you both ways of doing this. You can pick the one you like. Which one do you guys want to see first? Point slope or the slope intercept? Point slope. Point slope, Point slope says y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. So you just plug in all the points in there. So uh, this is a, a 3 here because that's the y. Our slope happens to be 5 fourths. And then the other one, happens, our x happens to be a negative 6. So we've got y minus 3 is equal to, using my distributive property, uh, 5 fourths x. That's a positive 6, correct? So 5 times 6 is uh, 30 divided by 4. Um, does that divide evenly? No, huh? It'd be like 12 and a half. Okay. So um, we'll leave it as 12 and a half. So y minus 3 is equal to 5 fourths x minus 12.5. I'm going to have to add this 3 to both sides, right? So this is now 0. And I've got y equals 5 fourths. Oh, good looking out. Because positive, positive, right? So that should be 15 and 1 half. 
<clears throat> Questions there? I should plug that in real quick. Uh, that's Is not, that wrong? That's not the might be it's seven times five. Touche, thank you. This should be seven point five? Yep. Yeah, because if half of that would be fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So ends up being ten and a half. Okay, make that correction, please. Thanks, James. So let's go ahead and punch that in here. And what's it in slope intercept form? So, ouch. Y is equal to um, 5 divided by 4 x plus, I wonder if it'll take 10.5. Although your answer is equal to the correct answer, it is not in the correct form. Be sure to read any instructions. Oh, use your, hey, good morning. I'll come back another time. Huh? Sounds good. Uh, use your integers or fractions. Okay. So it, 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 said, it didn't say decimals, did it? <clears throat> so how do we write 10 and a half as a, it would be 21 halves? Right? <coughs> yeah, if you read the instructions, it said use integers or fractions. It didn't say any decimals. How do you do what? <coughs> Questions on that? How's it 21? Let's go over here real quick. Thank you for asking that. Um, right here, this needs to get converted into a into a improper fraction. So it goes. It, I, I do a little circle thing. It goes two times ten plus the one. Remember that business? Oh yeah. Yeah. So two times ten is twenty plus the one gives you twenty one. So it's twenty one halves. Got to go way back for that one, huh? <laughs> Um, that was a little, um, a little more work than I would expect to do, um, but it is what it is. Any other questions? Thank you for closing your laptop. You guys need a, a, a calculator if you don't have one. I'm going to show you. That's why I need you to get one. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that is the letter. 
whatever it is. Uh, we'll have to find the, the symbol. It's like a hospital It's cold. Good. That's where germs die. Have you been to the ICU? Like, if you ever go in there, it's just what it feels like. All right, take a few minutes. Do this problem real quick. Says um, the graph. Thank you. The graph shows the number of hours and amount of money you earn each day last week. How many hours should you work to earn two hundred dollars? What assumption did you have to make? And explain your, your answers. So please make sure you have that. I'm loading up the dojo. Here's the data. Here's the data. Juan Andrade.
and it's all signed. It says what? It says what? Uh, maybe you're French. It says what? So, I'm here we go. Let's right. start with you, uh, Bailey. What'd you come up with? How many hours would you have to work, sir? <laughs> Around 10? Yeah. How, how did you come up with that? Yes. It's too... Thanks, Bailey. How'd you come up with that? Six hours. Six hours is what? Well, it was also about seventy dollars. So, so you see the question. I'm not sure why you picked that one. Thank you, though. That's for you. Oh, you just got back, so we'll give him some time. Jaeger, yeah. what'd you come up with? I couldn't think of that. Any idea? Some idea? I mean, just look at the patterns, right? How much money? How many hours do you think you'd have to work? I heard a ten right now. I'll write it down. Twelve. <coughs> it's ten, Jaeger. Why are you saying twelve? Honestly, just because of the pattern. Just because of the pattern? Twelve. Um, when I just looked at it, just by looking at the pattern, and even if I did use six, uh, it kind of made sense because uh, on average, if I look at six, how much is he making on average? One hundred dollars, right? So if I want two hundred, then I just double that, right? So twelve, just by looking at the pattern, made sense to me. I'd have to work about twelve hours, correct? Anybody come up with a different solution? No. All right. Well. Here's another way, uh, thing that you could have done was to look at this data was to grab that small point. Do you guys see how that small point down here? Uh, where's it at? Oh, I lost my point. Here we go. Uh, I guess that would, wouldn't work. Um, yeah, how much is this point right there for five hours of work? It's about $90? Like 80? So I make, remember, this is change in Y. That's horrible. Change in Y over change in X. So if I made $80 for five hours of work, okay, what's 80 divided by five? Sixteen? So this becomes 16. Then that means when I simplify this, how much money am I making? About $16 and hour so I can take that 16 uh, not not take the 16 I want to how much do I want to make I want to make 200 so if I divide by 16 that will tell me how many hours I've got to work right so what's 200 divided by the 16 12.5 12.5 nice thank you so there we go it's about 12 and a half hours which was almost about the 12 so a couple different ways of doing that right of how you want to of how you want to try to approach this problem any questions on here? I was close. It was close. I mean, they were all pretty close. They were just guesses, right? So let's take a look at what we are going to be doing with this. So essential understanding. <clears throat> Guys, please don't make me go over here. Uh, sometimes it's possible to model data from a real world situation with linear equations. You can use the equation to draw conclusions about the situation. So. We have sometimes a lot of data. It really does look like this. It's not nice. They're all over the place. But we still want to make some conclusions. We want to make some predictions, some educated guesses, if you will, um, about what's going on. So here we have this, uh, this table of data. I should have opened up my, uh, not you. I don't want you. I want you. Let's close this real quick. Go away. Uh, all right, cool. That'll load up in a minute. So, the table, the table lists average monthly temperatures 
and the electricity costs for Texas homes in 2008. The table displays the values rounded to the nearest whole number. What they want us to do is to make a scatter plot, and then the question is, how would you describe the correlation? Math does not like heart, right? Especially now that we have technology with us. So what we would do is we would take all that data and we throw it into a calculator. And that's what I'm going to teach you to do. I know before, uh, you guys are already thinking about like, man, I got to have to make a scatter plot. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to, I've already, uh, let me go open up this file real quick. I already have this pre-made, so I'm going to go ahead and open it real quick. So here's my home prices. I've thrown them into, I guess you guys would call these on a computer an Excel file. Okay, or a spreadsheet. Thank you for closing your laptops. So here are your inputs and your outputs. And what I want to do with those is I want to take a look at the graph of those. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a data statistics. And there's all my points. Now there's no order to these, so don't, on here you don't want to make, try to make sense of those. But the question is here, if we're talking about um, electri elect uh, electricity bills and how much we have to, how much electricity we consume, which one explains which? Does the usage of the, let me go ahead and back, go back real quick. Which of these is, I guess, the independent variable? Which is the X? The temperature. Average. Average what? Temperature. Thank you. Yeah, so the temperature would explain electric bills, right? I think, especially in Arizona, we see that. When summer comes in, we get higher temperatures. Those, those bills go up real big, don't they? So, yeah, I just think like arguing with your sense. So. Uh, put your ID on too, please. I don't have an ID. Are you okay with it? You're going to need an ID. Um, so, let's go ahead and, and, and put these together. Here's the average temperature. And we want to match that up with the average uh, bill. So, now we have an XY and then we have data here. Okay? Now, taking a look at these, it's going to be a little bit much more difficult to try to make that line the best fit, right? You guys remember you had to take your ruler and try to get points above and points below? We're not going to do all that. So, um, what we're going to do is something called a linear regression. And that's what you got to be able to do. So, I'm going to show you guys how to do it up here, and then we'll do another one on the ones that you guys have. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and insert a calculator page real quick here. And I'm going to go into my menu. And we want to run statistics. Statistics. And we're going to do a linear regression. Now, I think somebody asked in here before, right? Um, MX plus B, AX plus, or AX plus B. Anyways, here's two forms right here, guys. There's a uh, line, there's three, and there's four. The top one says MX plus B. You'll see that MX plus B a lot in algebra, uh, which is what we're doing. So that's the one we're going to use right now. So here they're asking us for our X. What was our X? Average temperature. What was our Y? Bills. So we're going to hit OK. It's going to spit out all this information here. What are the two things that we need to make our line? <coughs> what do we need? We need a slope, which we call M. What else do we need? The y-intercept, which we call B. So from here, you can write this as y equals 4.14x minus 117.67. And there's your equation. <coughs> I truncated. You can do that if you want. You can round. I like to just truncate. Okay? Questions there? Okay. Let's try this again, and then you guys can do it with your data. Here's some data for you guys. Go ahead and grab your calculators. It should look something like this one, right? Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Everyone on the home screen? Yeah. Okay, cool. Push this clear if you got anything in there. I just like having a clear, clear screen there. Clear? It's right here. Clear is right here. That just cleans everything out. You guys good? Okay. We're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to go over to stat. 
And then we're just going to go to one, which is edit, stat edit. And you should have a bunch of lists like this, correct? Okay, stat, and push enter for edit. Should look like that. We're good? Yeah. Cool beans. All right. <coughs> I've got stuff in here. You guys want to be careful with this. When you get to the top, see how I pushed at the top? It says L1. Let me make this a little bit bigger. You guys can see. Uh, is this the one? Yeah. So you see how the top, the L1 is, is black? Yeah. And if I want to clear this, I'm going to push the clear button. And then I'm going to press enter. Do not push the delete button because that will make your L1 go away completely. You don't want to do that. Okay? So, again, I just go to the top, push clear, press enter, and they're gone. Go to the top, press clear, enter, and they're gone. So now I can I can punch in my data for L1. I can punch in data for L2. One should be all your X's. The other one should be all of your Y's. So I'll put that screen up real quick and I'll let you guys punch those in. So in this case, we want our years. <clears throat> now before you start punching in years, guys, because that's going to look crazy. Um, you don't want to, whenever you're dealing with a year problem, you don't really want to use a year. Whatever lowest value they give you, you want to treat it as if it was point zero or the value of zero. Okay, so this is your zero. You would tra transfer that for one, two, three, four, five. Oh crap, I missed them, didn't I? Oh no, we're good. Five, six. Does that make more sense with our numbers? So you want us to use. Uh, they're jumping by tens, though. You guys want to go by tens instead? Zero, ten, twenty, thirty, forty. What do you think, Robert? As years? Okay, that's fine. You just gonna have to be careful once we do get to the end. I'm gonna freeze that real quick and I'll punch it into my calculator. Top row should have this, the second one should have all the monies.
get to the home screen where I can do my calculations there. So I'm going to go and press second and then quit. That data is still stored there somewhere. It's all good. Okay. Please watch me do this one time and then you guys can go back and run your regression. Okay. Maybe take notes as I go. So I want my home screen. Statistics. So I'm hitting that stat button. I'm going to show you this history real quick here. So I went to stat. I'm going to jump over to calculations. So I pushed stat and I moved over one menu. And I'm looking for number four, which is linear regression AX plus B. That's equivalent to MX plus B. So you can scroll down or you can just push four. I'm going to push four. It's going to ask you, where's your information at? Where's the X data? It was the first one, wasn't it? Yeah. And the Y data is an L2. Notice that the number two has a little blue L2 above it, doesn't it? Okay. So to, to get that, you're going to hit second L2 and it'll change that to an L2. We're good? Cool. Now, all I need to do now at this point is go down to calculate. It's going to spit out the numbers that I need. How many people got two numbers? A and B. Well, that's all you really need, right? Okay. So let's write this equation. Yeah, go down to calculate, press enter. Everybody's equation just like mine? Now, nah, don't worry about those two. We're not pirates. Arr. So how do I write this equation? Y equals... How do you know that one goes first? Yeah, if you take a look up here, guys, here's the form of it. Y equals AX plus B, MX plus B. So Y equals 14114 point, we'll go 29 this time. X plus 25114.29. So there's your equation right there. That equation is that line of best fit. <coughs> have to um, rely on the old methods 
that we did in elementary school. You guys remember that you'd have to find your first point and then try to get from that half the points above, half the points below kind of thing. And then you try to fit it, something like this. And that's what you find the equation of line to. That's, that's your best guess at what you can do with the tools that you have. But because we do have technology that will do it for us, then that's what we want to use because that is the most accurate prediction that we can use with the data that we have. Okay? Because it does all kinds of millions of things to make sure that's the best one. Is that the best line right there that I could have drawn? No, that was my best guess. Okay? So that's what you'd have to do if you don't have the machine. Okay? Um, now, they asked about, they didn't even ask about the equation, did they? Okay, they asked about the correlation. The equation was pretty easy to get. But we also need to talk about the correlation. When we talk about correlation, we're talking about a couple things. We're talking about the strength. We're talking about the direction. And we're talking about, well, it should be linear in, in our case right now because we're doing linear data. Um, but you should also talk about form. So go ahead and write these three things down. Whenever they ask you for correlation, they're asking you for strength, First thing, when we talk about strength, when we're talking about strength, we're talking about how close together those points are or how separate they are. Okay? So, if they are really nice and close together following that linear formula, you say that if, so if they did something like this, let's say here's your data and the points are like that, that's pretty close, isn't it? Yeah. So you say that that's a strong relationship. So strength is strong. <coughs> If they're a little bit looser, maybe something like this, you could say that's moderately strong. If they are kind of loose like that, but you can still see that they're moving upward, then you'd say that's weak relationship. And then finally, of course, If the points are just all over the place, and you can't see if they're moving up or downward, then you say there's no correlation. There's zero strength here. Make sense? Yeah. And the same is true if they were moving downward, guys. So right now I'm just showing you positive examples, but they are, they're all the same. So you've got strong, uh, moderately strong, weak, or no relationship. Questions on those? No? Okay. <coughs> I said the other thing is direction. Are the data moving upward? Downward. Okay, so we're talking about direction. Are they moving upward in a positive fashion? Kind of like those positive slope equations. Or are they moving downward? Like the negative slope equations. Are they scattered together vertically or horizontally? That's what you want to address when we're talking about form, okay? Or sorry, direction. <coughs> Why'd you take my tissue? Nah, you hold on to that. <laughs> 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 so 
Strength direction three is going to be form. The last thing you want to talk about is going to be form. <clears throat> Take a look at those. What form did they seem to take on? Line. Like a line, right? They seem to be linear. How about those points? They look more parabolic, don't they? They look like a parabola. And that's what you'll say when we're talking about form. Oh, they look like they're going in the form of parabola. Or it may be absolute value. I don't know. It depends. Okay? Look at the data. You'll have to decide that. Okay? Strength, direction, form. Usually when we're talking about those, we are talking about lines, though. So if you do see that there's a, a different shape in there, then you want to bring that up right away and say, hey, this shape, is, this is not behaving normally, so it's kind of hard to say that they're going to be positive or negative type stuff. But. <clears throat> hey, hey, take a picture back, uh, I got, I got you. Go ahead. I'll just mess with you. Okay, here's another set of data. I want you guys to go ahead and find I want you guys to go ahead and find me the line of best fit here, please. And I want you to make a prediction for the cost for the cost of gallons of milk. Excuse me. In the year. Oh, what are we in? 2017. And then find me a, make a prediction for the cost of milk in 2017. Because you always get on sale the fries. So do I. <laughs> and I get my 20 cent gas bonus. <coughs> Tell, please let me know. You like how you smell in the desk again? <coughs> Your eyes burn too. We should have like the burning eyes like at the same time.
Who's got an equation for me? All right, let me call somebody then. Open the tab. Get it? Let me walk you guys through this one more time. Someone read me the note. What was what year was it? What did you use for your years? Let's take a look. So zero two four six eight. So zero two four six eight. What's the cost? Two sixty five, two eighty nine, three zero one, twenty seventy seven. Okay. Oh, that's not right. What did I miss? Yeah, I would need ten, wouldn't I? Thank you. data in here, I'm going to go second and quit so I can get to the home screen. Okay? Thank you. So I'm on the home screen. Stat. I need to go over to calculations. And I'm going to select option four, which is linear regression. Is my data still in the right place? It was L1 and L2, right? So I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way down to calculate. Press enter. Do I need these last two numbers? Not right now. Don't worry about those. Thank you. So my equation. Thank you. Thank you. I still got time. Stop packing up, please. Y equals 0 0.9x plus 2.619. There's my equation. If I want to make a prediction for 2017, I have to figure out how many years that is from, from, from 98. And that's what I'm going to plug in. It's going to spit out the number. They put an x, spits out a y. If you didn't figure out how to go through the process, it's on YouTube. Go check it, please. 